What is going on, world? Uh, whoever's watching this in the franchise industry, we appreciate you uh, paying attention to these conversations. Uh, it is Friday. We are hitting yet another end to another weird week. Um, various states are changing their rules around reopening, um, which is a good indicator. We'll see what that means for uh, how the disease behaves and how our hospital system works. Um, but it, from a positive standpoint, uh, as you see some of the shifts in the conversations, now we're turning it into uh, recovery. And it, obviously, we don't know when recovery is going to be officially here and done and completed. And we're like, yeah, we are completely recovered. But positivity seems to be swaying that, hey, now, now at least we have a viewpoint of how we've navigated the last month. Um, we have some sort of ideas on how we're going to navigate May. And now we're, we're starting to find some winning stories. It, winning might be defined a little bit differently, um, but now the winning stories um, exist. So today we're joined by Matt Kelton and Laura Lee uh, Brown from Show Homes. I appreciate you guys joining us. Another franchisee franchisor uh, discussion. Um, Matt, I'm gonna start with you. Just general statements of how you're navigating this personally from a business standpoint, what you're seeing from a franchise standpoint, and then We'll go over to you, Laura Lee, um, for just some feedback as well. So again, I appreciate being on here, Nick. Uh, a bit about show homes for people who don't know about us. We are the largest home staging network in the U.S. We have around 60 franchises in 18 states. So we do vacant staging, things you may see uh, on HGTV. We do occupied staging for people who are looking to... Uh, who are living in their home, looking to get them sold. We do uh, home updates. So minor prepping homes to sell, paint and carpet and things like that. And then our initial model, which was how we got started in the 1980s during another crisis, during the savings and loan crisis, is our executive home manager program where people are living in homes and kind of like an Airbnb model. And so we've got multiple revenue streams. And so uh, as far as how we're navigating it, um, from a personal standpoint, our corporate office, we've worked remotely for 15 years. And so it's not changed that much. And so my team is virtual, we're in all over the country. And so for us, it hasn't been that big of a change. My, my franchisees work um, from home office bases, although they have some warehouse space, but for them, they're, you know, that aspect hasn't been that much differently. Uh, but over the last 30 days, we've been navigating you know, how can we support the franchisees as far as, you know, the funding, the various, the PPP and SBA disaster assistance programs. There are a lot of state uh, regulations and laws as far as essential versus non-essential uh, business. And so, uh, you know, that shifted a lot. So at this point, 100% of our franchisees are open and we're pretty blessed in the fact that with our model, uh, people are always needing shelter. They're, you know, the core needs of people, you know, food, water, clothing, shelter. And so people are, you know, always wanting to, to move. And so we're in our, our key selling season right now. And so if anything, it's, uh, it's going to be compressed. And so our people are busy. We're, we're shifting into the fact that we're doing more vacant staging and uh, virtual staging or, or not staging, but virtual consultations. We're not doing really occupied staging or updates right now. But, you know, honestly, the, the vacant staging is really where our growth has been. So our people are busy and luckily, uh, you know, they're continuing to, to get work. So I think that's a, that's a positive. Laura Lee, and, and from your standpoint as a, as a nearly 10 year franchisee, uh, obviously you've navigated some different types of experiences. How was your mindset going into this? How has been the support of the franchisor in this? How's your confidence level as you continue to guide through this? Sure. Um, well, my confidence has always been high because um, I love what I do. And we know this is only for a short time that we're experiencing this uncertainty and this difficulty. I don't see this lasting forever. So I think there'll be a lot of pent up uh, energy when we're all really able to get back to work and get back to normal again. And so it'll be a matter of catching up at that point. Our franchise has been really great about um, supporting us through this and uh, helping us in um, just understanding um, the PPP, understanding the SBA loans, uh, helping us um, get more information and uh, providing us with some some degree of um, uh, extra 
I don't know, security in some way that um, someone, um, a franchisor is, is, has got our backs, so to speak. And so that's been a real comfort through this time. Um, I see that, you know, we have lots of things on the books for uh, the upcoming season. We're just waiting for things to happen soon. So I'm, I'm very positive and I'm just looking forward to, you know, when, when we do get back to normal, which we hope will be very, very soon. Laura Lee, the, the journey you took 10 years ago, there's gonna be so many individuals out there in the next few months, the next year or so. Maybe in the past they would have considered independent entrepreneurship, or maybe they're leaving corporate America and they're gonna have some uncertainty, not knowing is franchising gonna be right for them? What franchisor to trust? As you reflect on your journey from 10 years ago, what were some of the things when, before you signed that franchise agreement, those intangibles that told you this was the right move? And how's that played out over 10 years and, and really now in terms of validation? Sure. We were looking for a franchise that um, we felt comfortable with. And so when we um, discovered showing just sort of in a, a roundabout way, um, we began to talk to other franchisees out around the country and we visited um, one in particular, and the story was the same from franchise to franchise, how much they valued the franchisor, how much um, the ethical standards and the value system was the same, um, and we were very akin to that. Um, it really spoke to who we were as a family, and so um, we felt like this was something that was uh, planned for us. And so when we chose Show Homes, it was more than just an investment in business. It was an investment in um, something that went along with um, our faith and our belief system, our value system. And that has continued throughout the 10 years. Um, some of the franchisees that we now have as colleagues are some of our best friends. Um, we're part of a larger mastermind group that we meet with regularly. And without the support of that group of people, I don't think we would be where we are now. And so it's just been an invaluable journey for us in our business, just to have um, such a great support system with show homes and um, just wonderful people who have, again, the same belief systems that we do. Uh, sh shame on us, but we don't we don't tend to ask this question, Matt. And I, I want to spin it back to you because we tend to focus on how has the franchisor uh, supported the franchise owner. Um, but for someone who's poured his blood, sweat, and tears into the business, how how good does it feel to to hear something like that? And does that mean does that add va valuation to all the hard work that you've put in to try to build the model that supports franchisees? Well, that's obviously those are amazing words to hear. And, uh, you, you, you know, I can tell you, I was a franchisee right out of college and I, you know, I grew up in franchising with my family. And so I've been on both sides of the table. And so, uh, in franchising, there's often there's a us versus them mentality, which I've always not had a lot of patience for, cause I just, I, I think it's a, it's a distraction. And so it, you know, the key is it's gotta, you gotta have strong relationships with your franchise owners. And so, you're, you know, it's like a marriage. You're not always going to agree on things, but I think you have to have mutual respect and, you know, we have to bring value. And so you need to listen. Uh, you need to be open to new ideas. And so, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we're successful with today are from, you know, best practices from our other franchisees. So, you know, clearly um, hearing those kind of, you know, comments are awesome. And, you know, it, it makes you feel good when you see someone who's really, you know, taking their business to, another level. And so I know uh, when Laura Lee joined, uh, you know, she was, she was definitely like a lot of franchises, she was very nervous <laughs> and it was a scary thing. I always tell people, if you're not scared, there's something wrong with you. And she's just blossomed and turned into, you know, someone who was kind of nervous about selling. Now she's probably, you know, the top person as far as having confidence in selling because she does amazing work and she's one of the top designers in the U S and she's won awards for, you know, a, a lot of, you know, various parts of our business, but the quality is some of the best out there. At the end of the day, that's what's going to sell 
what we do. So, you know, culture is a major thing for us. The, the a thing that you'll hear often with show homes when our prospects talk to our franchisees as family. And that's, that's really what we try to, to create. You know, we, uh, you know, we, communication has been a big part for us right now. And so we have a weekly call, it's a town hall and, you know, we want to hear what's going on. And I think franchisees love talking to each other. I think we talk a bit about the PPP and some of these things, but a lot of it is they want to get to catch up with each other and see what's happening on, uh, on a personal level as well as the business side. But we, you know, we also have a, a, a Facebook private group and that thing, they're on it all day long and I'm not really managing or <laughs> monitoring it that much, frankly. I mean, they're in control of this thing. And, you know, we've had forums and intranets before that people frankly didn't use that much, but it just, it's, it's such a part of the culture and it's such a, a great resource for them. If they have a problem, they could post something and then they get 20 people chiming in. And so, those are all parts of the of the business, but you know we've tried to create a specific culture. That there's that old saying: if you don't create a culture, it creates itself. And so having people like you know like Laura Lee and some of the other kind of the influencers uh, has really made a big impact. So we're definitely you know really pleased to hear you know, positive things like that for sure. Yeah, Matt. I I, I mean Laura Lee. I mean just your statement of it being an invaluable journey, right? Is is pretty amazing. And what's amazing is for someone who's not, hasn't taken that step yet to see the end result and, and for someone to look back after 10 years, talk about that invaluable journey. And, and Matt, I mean, like there's many franchisors who'd be scared to have franchisees in Facebook groups and community groups and stuff like that. Laura Lee, if I, I dove in a little more into culture, and I think you mentioned a couple of times about ethical values could you, for someone, again, who's maybe going to take this step with any brand, what, what, and I guess, and I know it's unique to you, but I'm just curious, when you talk about ethical values and culture, what sticks out to you? Well, what I love is that they do what they're, they say they're going to do. They um, are very honest with us about what is going on. Um, there's no, no surprises. Um, there are a few things that, you know, maybe changes that have occurred over the last year, such as adding specific services that we've been nervous about, but they've really um, taken the time to um, educate us. We have something called Show Homes University, where we take online classes, and we, have, we even have tests that we have to pass, um, so that they make sure that we are knowledgeable about what we're going to be selling and offering. Um, so... You know, it's not like they're just sending us out there on our own to um, sink or swim. They're giving us all the support we need in a very open and honest and um, trustworthy format. Um, and there's not a day that I feel like I couldn't pick up the phone and call Matt um, and ask him a you know very difficult question and not get a, a, you know, a perfectly honest answer. So I think that's where where the rubber meets the road um, in terms of just that ethical. Um, um, trustworthiness with your franchisor. Um, you don't want to um, be nervous about calling corporate ever. So it's, it's um, you know, I, I would never consider there would be a day that I would hesitate to ask the question. Um, and it might not be the answer I'm looking for, but I will get an honest answer. So I think that, that's, I hope that's answering your question. Um, to, to both of you, I, wa I want to switch gears towards uh, innovation as, as, a, as a category. Um, and as it relates to the real estate, uh, the residential real estate industry as a whole, there are things like uh, um, dro drones that are going into the homes to do uh, uh, showings, virtual or, or virtual images. Uh, Online has shifted tremendously uh, as exposure to what's out there on the marketplace. Uh, the role of the real estate agent has probably evolved over the last 10 years. Um, what are some things that, that make a moment like this sustainable for show homes? Uh, one, and, and then two, what, what, what could this drive forward? Like what, what other changes to the space could happen in the near term that's that's pushed faster because of what we're going through with uh, COVID. Matt, I would love to start with you on that. So 
as I look back at when I first bought my house, uh, my very first one, I think Charles and I are probably close to the same age. So you had the old, you know, the old lady driving the, the Cadillac smoking Marlboro lights and you're kind of held ca captive for eight hours. <laughs> and it was kind of a nightmare. Now the, you know, the uh, person, the home buyer is in control. And so they're going to be looking online for the most part. And you've got to have, you know, your house has got to be staged or it's got to look really good. It's got to be prepped. You can't have old paint colors. You can't have, you know, grandma's, you know, wallpaper up. And so we talk a lot about winning the beauty contest. So clearly that's been a major shift as far as the buying pattern. So that's one piece we've seen. Uh, one of the big things that we're looking at right now, and Laura Lee can touch on this, is we're starting to do these 3D virtual Matterport tours. And so you'll be able to go from you know anywhere in the world and you can do a tour of a home. It's like you're there. And so that's one aspect that we have a lot of uh, excitement about. There are companies that are doing essentially like feature looking movies. And uh, there's a company in Nashville that does that. And uh, you walk through and it's, it's uh, you go from room to room and they have actors and you can get a feel for it. And, you know, the guy who set it up told me a, a, a guy in uh, a man in London bought a home in Nashville. And he never went to the home, but he watched this movie a thousand times <laughs> and it provided kind of a look for what it's like. So, uh, you know, that's a piece uh, with everything going on and with no vaccine for COVID, you know, clearly social distancing is going to be a thing for quite a while. So having Zoom meetings uh, and doing uh, virtual consults is going to be a big thing. Uh, it's going to be a major kind of the new normal. And so yesterday we rolled out with all of our franchisees uh, a Zoom enterprise accounts uh, for everyone. So, you know, a lot of them were using it, but they were using a, a free version. So this one has a, has a lot more uh, horsepower in it. And so I think that's going to be an aspect. Uh, uh, you're probably going to see less number of homes that they go to, uh, you know, they're still going to need to see the house most likely. And so we're following the CDC guidelines. But uh, for us, I think you're going to, you're going to see a combination of virtual tours, more video, more Zoom meetings, uh, more virtual type things. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to, to look at ways that we can enhance the experience. Hey, Matt. More lead to you. What, what enhancements are you seeing as well? Sure. We added for this particular month, and we may continue it on into May, um, virtual 3D Matterport tours with our um, staging projects. And we already offer complimentary um, photography. So our clients are already used to getting exceptional photography for, uh, from show homes because we know how important online photography is. But now that um, we're going through this crisis, the, that virtual tour is even more important, as Matt stated. So we are adding the 3D virtual technology. We're also looking at some e-commerce um, because we have a lot of staging inventory, which we like to move through um, from time to time. So we're actually looking at um, providing uh, an e-commerce site so that people can shop for used inventory. Um, so we're, we're really thinking out of the box because now we have a little bit of time to do that. And so it's been interesting to um, use this time to shift in, in many ways, um, technology-wise, uh, and think about things in a whole different way, a uh, real paradigm shift. Matt, it's, it's always interesting seeing a business that starts off with a traditional service, traditional um, you know, on-site service, and then to see as time evolves, other services grow around it. And then now as technology comes in, basically show homes becomes a marketplace, digital. And it, it's just interesting to see. I mean, these are, I mean, some of these changes are things you probably could have never anticipated over time. Well, absolutely. You know, when, when I joined uh, 13 years ago, all we did was home management. And, and again, that's where people live in homes that are for sale. And so that's, um, was it was really a, a specific niche and that's a great model during a slow market, but in a hot market, it becomes more difficult to do. And so we've moved into traditional vacant staging to remodeling essentially, and you know, these virtual tours. So we've become really a full service, uh, you know, high you know, quality design company. And, you know, we have a number of um, revenue streams under one uh, roof. And so what's great about our model is that the homeowner and the realtor have one person who they have to call instead of having to deal with five. And so we handle, 
you know, every piece of that. And so, you know, a lot of that clearly comes from our franchisees innovations. And so, yeah, clearly what we're, what we're going to be seeing is a move to, you know, more digital, uh, you know, our marketing is, is clearly focused on that. We've, uh, we've made a, a decision to, to do a major push on Google, Facebook, Instagram, and people are sitting at home like never before. And so this month, our overall web traffic has quadrupled and our total leads generated have doubled uh, compared to a year ago during a global pandemic. So there are people who are sitting at home right now with lots to do. And we're also seeing a shift as far as, and I think you're going to see a big shift where people are going to want to work remotely. Um, you know, my wife works for a major university and for the first time, even though they've asked for years, they're allowing the team to work remotely or requiring it. And now they're saying they're not going to allow them to come back and they're going to have staggered shifts because they've gotten so much more productive. But you're going to, what you're going to see is people have, they're going to want bigger, you know, home offices. They're going to need more set, you know, more space. And so I think you're going to see people uh, investing more in their home because they know they're going to have to spend more time in their homes and they want to have the right setup. And so, uh, the home is going to be, you know, a, a much bigger thing than I think you've seen in the, in, in the past as you're spending so much time in it and you're going to be working there. So you're going to be seeing a lot of changes. And so having the right place, having the right way to market and to uh, communicate with the customer is really important. And so, you know, part of our job is to look at the newest features, the newest ways to market and, then, you know, how can we drive revenue for our franchisees? How can we drive traffic? How can we get more converted leads on our websites. Uh, and that's, you know, part of our job. And so we're going to listen to them and we're going to listen to the customer, but uh, real estate is, you know, probably the biggest, you know, if you, if you look at the economy, it's, it's the driver, it's what you know, drives the economy in a good market or bad market. You know, luckily we have the lowest interest rates we've ever had. Uh, you've got demand that's bigger than it's ever been. Uh, we've been at three months of inventory versus 12 during the, the big uh, recession. And I think if anything, we're going to have bigger opportunities for us as a lot of these laid off people are going to need to sell homes. And so we're going to have more inventory. So you add it all up, I feel pretty good about kind of where we're positioned uh, going into this crisis. I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear this because when you, when you look at the marketplace, typically you think back to 2008, it, it was such a, such a disaster. Uh, and now in this, in this scenario, the value of the home may have increased because there are plenty of people sitting at home and seeing what they like and what they don't like. Right. Uh, and maybe that's going to be good for, for the industry. Maybe there, there is a silver lining here. Obviously there, there's so many things that are left unknown right now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, it's certainly interesting to hear that, uh, hear that feedback. Um, as you think through the, through the next year, then you're, you're feeling pretty positive, Matt, on where this goes. And I assume the franchise owners feel the same. Yeah, I mean, we did a on our call yesterday. Or we did a, you know, again, we're using Zoom, and we did a survey asking them what they thought, and you know, the the majority of them felt like we were going to have a really explosive uh, summer. You know, you know, several thought we we would have the biggest summer ever, and so I think we're going to have a major V type of a um, bounce back for us because you do have a compressed uh, sales cycle, and there, people still need to move, and they're going to continue to move, and as the states start to ease up and we start to open things up, uh, people are going to want to, uh, to, you know, to make those life changes. And so, you know, clearly it's, it's going to be different. It's not going to be business as usual. Uh, we're adapting, but you know, I've got people thinking we'll have the, our best summer ever. Uh, and we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to continue to market aggressively. And so, uh, each day is a little different. It's a, <laughs> you hear the word fluid situation and pivot all the time. And so, uh, it definitely is, is a different you know, period. But I can just say uh, our people are busy. They are working. They're, you know, the, the number of leads we're getting is increasing. So I think these are all positive signs. And so we're hoping for uh, the world to get back on its access sooner than later. Charles, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Matt, in terms of franchise sales cycle, what does your franchise development process look like right now in terms of leads and, and potential conversions and how you guys are approaching that? So 
I think we were like a lot of people that, you know, the leads that we had, you know, 30 days, the majority of them put things on hold. I think a lot of people were sitting at home watching the news and, you know, there's a lot of fear. Uh, we're seeing a, 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 just over the last 10 days, a, a massive increase in, in, in interest. And so I think you're going to see uh, a big spike for us. You know, you, you always hear that franchise sales do, do, does well during a recession. And so, you know, we did, you know, if you look at Laura Lee, uh, when she bought uh, in that, 2009, 2010, that was one of our biggest classes ever. And so I think we're going to have a big you know, year. It's probably going to be a few more months would be my guess until uh, things normalize a bit. But, you know, I, I think the number of people who are, are you know, outplaced because of work, but also people who have concerns about corporate America and not being in, in control of their destiny, so to speak, uh, they're going to want to look at something different. And, you know, what's the difference about show homes, and I've been franchising, you know, 25 plus years, uh, it's a business where you can take your passion and not to be corny, but that's really what we're looking for is people who love real estate, love design, love HGTV and go into open houses for fun. And they can be creative. And they're, frankly, there are not a lot of franchises that you can uh, meet that, you know, satisfy those creative needs. And so for us, you know, I think we're, you know, we're positioned in a good space as far as growth. And, you know, we're working heavily with the, the broker consultant community and it's been kind of overwhelming the amount of interest we've had in the last couple of weeks. Well, Lee, from, from a marketing standpoint at the local level, can you take us through some of the journey that you've gone through over the last, last few months? Have you, have you continued your marketing spend and your customer outreach? Has it slowed down? Are you looking to accelerate it? What what's kind of the life cycle going on locally? Sure, we're we're just continuing to do what we've always done uh, with social media and marketing, and uh, working with our agent fans and trying to gain new um, clients. So we have not missed a beat on the marketing side. We're not slowing down that at all because we know how important it is. And again, we do have projects on the books, um, so we know that's working, but we aren't um, holding back at all because we know uh, people are at home and they are looking at the internet. They are watching things and watching videos that they might not have had time for um, previously. So it's really important right now for us to continue just to march forward with um, all of our marketing and not, not slow down at all. So as we take the, the final turn, uh, Charles, I'll let you start if there's any final thoughts that you want to give, uh, but we'll go through everybody for final thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I guess just going back um, to Laura Lee's comment about this being an invaluable journey. And so I guess, you know, a good point for franchisors out there right now, in addition to show homes would be as they reevaluate their sales processes, the value they deliver, you know, maybe to question 10 years from now, what are their franchisees going to look back on as they reflect on what could be potentially an incredible journey. So um, I, I think those are just amazing points, Laura Lee, and, and credit to show homes really, because that's a pretty big statement. Laura Lee, final thoughts? Well, I, you know, he asked me earlier about, um, you know, the beginning. It, it's interesting how, how much we forget over 10 years. But, you know, if I would have not chosen show homes and just opened my own home staging company 10 years ago, I would not be where I am today. So I attribute, you know, a huge amount of our success to the brand and um, the resources and information and the other franchisees to support and encourage and provide help when needed um, to where we, we, we are. And um, we are one of the top franchisees and we just had an amazing um, opportunity to serve um, our clients and homeowners, uh, sellers, agents, homeowners who are even buying homes um, we've been able to help. So it's just been a, a wonderful, um, again, invaluable journey, but I could not have done that without Showrooms. So we're just very, very happy to be part of the Showrooms brand and the Showrooms family. And um, I would encourage anyone who is considering this kind of franchise to really 
take a good look at Sherman's, um, ask good questions, and you will get good, honest answers. Um, you'll find that this is, uh, you know, just a, a really great um, opportunity. And Matt, final thoughts? You know, what I've been talking to our franchisees about is, you know, these can be scary times, but really when you when you hit, hit times like this is really times for opportunities. Uh, I know, Charles, you're, you use EOS, Gina Wickman, and uh, we've been doing that for five years to run our company. And we have our mastermind groups. Franchisees run that as well. He's, I heard him on a webinar recently saying that if you look at 10 year cycles and this is something that he learned early in his career, you're going to have two years of static growth, six years of pretty strong growth and two years that can put you out of business and for different reasons. <laughs> As I look back, that's kind of true in a lot of ways, but uh, we survived the recession and did well. We survived 9-11 and we are going to get through this, but you know, there are opportunities. Show Home started during a crisis in the 1980s during the, the saving loan crisis. You know, from a personal standpoint, my grandfather opened up a Philco radio store on the day of the Great Depression when it started the big crash, the stock crash. <laughs> But he was able to pivot. He put let people put radios in their house for a week for free, and then they refused to give them back. And he grew great wealth. He he took advantage of World War II, selling air conditioners. He started a franchise in the '60s, selling TVs, becoming the, one of the biggest manufacturers in the U.S. And so there are ways to take advantage of these crises, and there are opportunities there. And I think franchising in the space is you know one of those things that you can people can really find a, a, a home and find a landing space from a scary situation. And there are a lot of good opportunities. I feel good about what we do and really proud of, you know, when, when I see what, you know, how Laura Lee has done and she just has made such an impact on us and her community. So we, uh, we feel really blessed for the business we have and uh, we're looking forward to uh, the next phase. Yeah, my final thought is lo love conversations like this because it's turning into the positivity that could potentially come out of this. And by no means are we are we out of the out of the danger zone yet as a as a country or as a world. Um, but brands that are starting to at least change or adjust their mindsets and start thinking about what could the potential mean for uh, their business is is quite refreshing. So I hope everybody at at home enjoyed uh, yet another conversation with uh, Matt and Laura Lee. Thank you for uh, the time today. We wish you uh, the best of luck as you continue to navigate. Uh, All right, thanks. Storm. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, guys.